Welcome everyone. I'm Francine Glick, Barnard Class of 77 and co-chair of the Alumni Leadership Group. Today's program is creating a powerful brand for career success with Wendy Marks from Journalism 81, and it is brought to you by She Opened the Door and Columbia at Home. The She Opened the Door initiative, which began with a historic conference in New York City in 2018, seeks to enlighten, educate, elevate, and to empower Columbia women across the university. She Opened the Door fosters this powerful network of women whose connection with Columbia broadens their potential and impact in the world, both personally and professionally. In today's program, author and branding expert, Wendy Marks, will explain what personal branding is and why it's essential today. After Wendy's presentation, we will hold a Q&A session moderated by my fellow alumni leadership group co-chair, Anna Rodriguez from CS 86 and 88. You'll be able to type your questions in the Q&A chat box at any point during the program. Finally, please stay until the end of the webinar for more information on future She Opened the Door programming, as well as a very special offer and gift for being here with us this evening. Wendy Marks is a marketing and branding authority who has turned virtually unknown people into icons through her PR and marketing agency. Now, as a published author, she's using her branding knowledge to show how people can reinvent themselves and find more meaning and purpose. Wendy stresses that a career journey isn't set or over just because someone reaches a certain age or point in life. With that, it is my esteemed pleasure to introduce Wendy Marks. Wendy, take it away. Well, thank you for that uh, lovely introduction and I'm excited uh, to be with everybody today. Let me just uh, share my uh, screen so I have some slides that should be helpful. So let me just, all right, let me get to the beginning. All right, so the subject tonight is creating a powerful brand for career success. And this is what we're gonna talk about. I wanna explain a little bit about personal branding because it's often misconstrued. And I'm gonna share some strategies and tips. And then I have a Columbia alumnus who very nicely volunteered for me to do a brand makeover. So I'm gonna show the before and after and then open it up for Q and A. I also have a special offer that I'm making available just for Columbia alumni that I'll share with you as well. As Francine mentioned, I'm a personal branding and career coach, an author, a speaker. I've actually rebranded myself five times, so I know whereof I speak. I have three master's degrees, and I often joke that I could make some good money selling them on the black market. I'm also the host of a new LinkedIn live show called Renewal at 50 Plus. I want to start by explaining what personal branding is and what it's not. It's really important not to confuse it with marketing hype. People sometimes hear the word personal branding and they roll their eyes. They think that it's pounding on the chest and saying how terrific they are. It's actually the opposite. It's about being authentic, adding value, and importantly, being authentic. If you're not authentic, people see through that. They wanna have somebody that's genuine, they can relate to who's accessible and ultimately who's delivering value. In addition, you're gonna to want to package your brand. And I'm gonna talk about that as we go through the presentation today. Now, why should we even be talking about personal branding? Actually, a Columbia degree or any fancy degree, a perfect resume, your terrific accomplishments, as great as they are, 
are not enough today. I'm gonna to repeat that, they're not enough today. The first thing people do is Google you if they're interested in learning about you. And if you don't have a robust personal brand, you don't exist. First impressions today are made via LinkedIn profiles, Google searches and social media channels. And ultimately it's easier to get hired with a personal brand. 80% in fact of employers admit to Googling potential employers before hiring them. In addition, we're living in a different world. Job security is a misnomer, it doesn't exist. 87% of recruiters today use LinkedIn to search for job candidates and to post jobs. A lot of businesses are offering some way of doing remote work. And what that means if you're working remotely is you're out of sight and out of mind unless you are well-branded. In addition, internet usage, particularly with the pandemic has soared and so is social media usage. All of which is an opportunity for you. How so? It's a chance to show your value and how you can help. It's actually a terrific time to build your personal brand Typically, people are more accessible with so many still working from home. They're not gatekeepers or as many who are keeping you out. And as I said before, the personal brand is essential when you're out of sight, you're often out of mind. I love this quote I wanted to share with you from Jeff Bezos, and it really defines what per a personal brand is. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And this is a quote from Tom Peters, the father of personal branding. And he has really put personal branding on the map with a Fast Company article about 25 years ago. And I was privileged to interview Tom Peters recently for Fast Company on personal branding. And Peter said, to be in business today, your most important job is to be head marketer for the brand called you. Now, if you're gonna remember anything from the presentation today, this is the slide to remember. If you don't brand yourself, somebody else will. You wanna be the director of your life to take charge, not be a passive onlooker. I want to briefly run through five key personal branding strategies. The first one is introspection. Now, you don't sit on a couch and go, mirror, mirror on the wall, what's my personal brand today? Would that wish that we could do that, but it doesn't work like that. What is a good exercise to do is to ask four to six people, friends, colleagues, to describe you in a few words. This will give you a good sense of how people perceive you. And if there's a big difference between how you see yourself and how somebody sees you, for example, you might see yourself as a leader, yet people, when you ask them, say, well, this person, you're kind of in the shadows, you're not out there. Well, obviously you have some work to do. Now that's an extreme example, but it gives you an idea of what you can find simply by asking somebody to describe you briefly. Also do a skills inventory. What do I mean by that? That's looking at your hard skills. Hard skills are things like accounting, um, database marketing, marketing analytics, copywriting, soft skills, are things that are a little less measurable. They're more qualitative skills like thought leadership, uh, your um, leadership skills, your team building skills. And do a, an actual inventory. See what your specific skills are. And if you are looking, for example, at getting into a particular area, it gives you a 
very quick idea of what you might need to add to your repertoire. So ask yourself where are there gaps. As part of creating your brand, you want to define your values, your vision, your mission. This is all about who you are, what you stand for, your purpose, your values. Now, when you do this, you don't have to complicate it. Make it simple and focused. You also need to create an elevator pitch. Now, an elevator pitch is called that because it's actually considered what you would tell somebody if you were going to go up or down in an elevator, tell them about yourself. So think when you do an elevator pitch of being very brief. I'm talking 20 to 30 seconds. You want to be specific. The worst thing you can do is use humdrum generic language. That doesn't distinguish you. You also want to be engaging. Don't simply say, well, I was a vice president and I was a manager. That doesn't mean anything. What sets you apart? Use language and phrases that people can relate to. Don't get immersed in using jargon. And be consistent. And this point will come out when I go through the personal brand makeover. It's so important not to have multiple names, multiple photos. You want people to recognize you. And you may have seen, I know I have, for example, on LinkedIn, you see somebody you know, you see the photo, you barely recognize this person because the photo is so old. Use a photo that's of much more recent vintage. So if people do meet you in the real world, they know who you are. Now you want to humanize your brand. You're a lot more than your credentials. People sometimes make the mistake of thinking their brand is all the education and degrees and uh, different work titles that they have. Your brand is so much more than that. And don't shy away from personal stories that make you human. For example, I've recently been sharing some stories about some experiences that I had over the past year on LinkedIn. And I've expressed some vulnerability. Among other things, I also talked about my reluctance to do video, that it makes me a little nervous. But I have to say, I've now started doing video and I'm liking it a lot more. But by just talking about things like that, people can relate to it. Everybody has some fears and it makes you more genuine and accessible. And I keep saying, don't pound your chest, but deliver value. Also have a point of view. That again makes you know, not a Casper milk toast, but somebody of interest. And be relatable. Somebody people say, hey, I really want to get to know this person. So to summarize, be likable and generous. And remember, it's not about you, it's about others. The whole point with a personal brand is to be a giver, not a receiver. And as in the rest of life, the more you give, and you don't give to get, but the more you give, the more likable you become, and the more people want to know you. When you deliver your brand, focus on a content niche. You don't want to be all things to all people because then you're all things to nothing. You're all, then you're basically nothing. So I urge you to focus on a particular niche. And content is very key in creating a personal brand. Now you may say, I don't write. I'm not a writer. I'm a mathematician. You don't have to be a writer, but when you Share content, you can add a few sentences that give your point of view, but share something somebody else has written. Or you can, of course, always hire somebody to help you with the content. And I keep saying that you want to be authentic because that is the sort of person 
that attracts other people. You want to be appreciative and you want to try to turn yourself over time into an industry expert. And a great way to do that is by creating content. And then I'll share a few other ways as well. Don't forget to evaluate how you're doing, pivot if necessary. And video is becoming more and more important. And it's the closest thing today to face-to-face. And I love this quote, so you're a little weird, work it, a little different, own it, better to be a nerd than one of the herd. And it just shows that it's important to emphasize your uniqueness, what makes you special and not shy away from doing that. I wanna share a few more tips before I get into the makeover. One is, as I keep emphasizing, you need to be consistent. Another important thing to do is to warm up old contacts, old contacts. Your network is truly a gold mine. And lots of times we just keep collecting contacts and we don't do anything with those contacts. So what I would suggest that you do is every week, reach out to a few of your contacts that you haven't spoken to in a while and let them know that you're thinking of them, you might share something you read with them that you think they might be interested in and suggest that you have a brief call, a catch-up call. And most people are open to that, particularly if you do it in a way where you're not seeking anything from this person, you're saying in a sense, I like you, let's connect again. And As I said before, you want to be a giver, not a taker. And it's so easy, particularly on LinkedIn, to be very lazy. And what I mean by that is you can just be up there getting connections, not doing anything, or simply occasionally liking somebody's content. What you need to do on LinkedIn is engage. You need to have your own content that you post there, comment on other people's content, people you're interested in, and it becomes a wonderful way of making connections. And if you're looking for a job, it's a terrific way to find a job, a terrific way to build your brand. Volunteering is another way to get out there, to add skills, to be a giver. And when I say get smarter, What I mean by that is to be a student for life. Today, things change every nanosecond. And obviously we can't totally keep up, but we can continue to learn so that when we leave school, it's not as if the books have closed, but we have to keep sharpening our skills. And as I mentioned before, video humanizes you. It's a way for people to see what you're about, to see your expressions, and it's almost as if they're there with you. I wanna share a few other tips. One is to guest post on an industry site. So many sites need free content. I'm not suggesting you start with the New York Times, but you can gradually work your way up but you can start on a specific site within your industry. The same thing with speaking at an industry event, which today usually means a virtual event. Connect with people in your industry. You should join and participate in groups, uh, appear on podcasts. Podcasts are a great way to get in front of an audience. And there are so many podcasts out there that are looking for speakers. And don't forget to follow influencers. These are people who are well-known in your area. And by following them and engaging with them, you can get to know them. And in a sense, by commenting on things that they're doing over time, they can get to know you. Now I want to go into our personal branding in action. And I want to introduce you to Milda DeVoe. And Milda was kind enough to offer herself 
for me to do a rebranding on. Nilda has an MFA in fiction creative writing from Columbia. She's a multi-talented woman who has split her focus between two businesses, writing and her nonprofit. And she's created two brands, Milda DeVoe and M.M. DeVoe. And Milda DeVoe is a 10-year-old brand, and that's overpowered the brand of M.M. DeVoe. And Milda's objective is to have the focus, much more focus on M.M. DeVoe, and she wants to get publishers to find her for her fiction writing. How do we brand M.M. DeVoe? One is consistency. And she needs to be M.M. DeVoe everywhere, not M.M. DeVoe and Milda DeVoe. We want to make her more engaging. She's a remarkable woman and people need to know her. We want her to be focused on her writing, which is where she wants to put her focus. Also on the target audience of publishers. We want to be sure that she's using keywords that are going to get people's attention. And she has a call to action, particularly on our LinkedIn profile. So Brittany, if you could, I'm going to stop sharing. And if you could share um, Milda's profile um, on LinkedIn. Right, this is the old Milda DeVoe. Let me see if, uh, Brittany, can you make that any larger? Let me see if I can. All right, this is Milda DeVoe now. And I don't know if you can see, but in the background, she has a sign for her nonprofit. That's the MM DeVoe brand, which she's no longer emphasizing. She has herself as executive director and founder of Pen Parentis, her nonprofit. And her, I don't know if it, this may be a bit hard to see here, but she em doesn't emphasize what her distinctiveness is. It's kind of a hodgepodge. You don't say, wow, this is a remarkable woman when you read her bio. She also needs to fix, in addition to fixing that photo, I don't know if you can see here her skills, but she doesn't list her current skills, doesn't emphasize her fiction writing. So I'm going to, uh, let me just see if there's anything else here so that you don't get a sense from looking at her bio that this is a remarkable woman who is currently shopping a book and that she wants to get attention for her writing, not necessarily for the nonprofit. And as you see, she calls herself Milda DeVoe, yet the nonprofit is M.M. DeVoe. So let me go back to um, the presentation. And I want to show the new Melda DeVoe. Let me go back here. All right, this is the new Milda DeVoe. And as you can see, I'm calling her here M.M. DeVoe. And I have in parentheses Milda DeVoe because some people do know her as Milda DeVoe, but she wants the emphasis on M.M. DeVoe. Now, if you go on LinkedIn, you type in M.M. DeVoe, she's non-existent. She doesn't appear. and. I created a new headline for her, focusing on her writing, an award-winning author, book author I used because 
that seems to be a good keyword for authors on LinkedIn of a memoir about founding a literary nonprofit, and she's internationally published, which gives her additional cachet and credibility. And then I completely rewrote her about section to make her engaging, somebody you want to know. And I started it by saying, if you want someone ordinary, you've landed on the wrong profile. I'm a Texas born Lithuanian. I danced for the Pope when I was 16. At 20, I ran away with a group of jugglers. You might know my voice if you've ever switched OnStar to Lithuanian in your rental car. Now this is somebody who comes alive. You go, wow, what an unusual person. Let me learn more. Now she goes on, I've got, gone on in this, brand makeover to say, I've interviewed more than 300 writers, many of them bestsellers, some Pulitzer Prize winners, National Book Award nominees, or Guggenheim Fellows. Nearly all of them were parents. So this is about her nonprofit. So I was able to weave that in, but to do so in a way that really makes her special. Most people have not interviewed more than 300 writers, including all these award-winning writers. So that sets her apart. And then I get into her fiction writing, which is what she wants to emphasize. In my professional life, I'm an award-winning author of cross-genre literary fiction, poetry, and a memoir. And then she, I have her going on to say that she's currently shopping a near future novel set in a world where the fine arts are only permitted in service of education. It's a story of a young mom wrestling with the guilt of wanting to return to her career as a dancer in a country where the performing arts have been banned. And that's interesting. You do want to find out the story. And then I indicate why she founded this nonprofit. She did it to provide resources to writers once they start a family, and then mention her memoir and guidebook for additional credibility. And again, mention that the book includes the experiences of a multitude of writer parents who are well known. And then I have her go on to say, besides writing and helping writers, I do occasional professional voiceover work in Lithuanian and English. This is how I sum up my life. Always do what's ever, whatever's next and choose the more intriguing path first. And certainly Milda DeVoe has done that. And then I encourage her to have a call to action. Want to learn more about my up coming novel, call me and she can put a phone number, email me. So this makes her come alive. It's somebody you want to know. Now LinkedIn is adding uh, the opportunity to also do some video with your profile. So MM DeVoe might want to do a brief introduction about herself also once that becomes available to her. Here are some other branding suggestions for M.M. DeVoe. To be M.M. DeVoe everywhere. On first reference to say M.M. DeVoe with parentheses Milda DeVoe. And use a consistent title. So I just put here award-winning internationally published writer or um, but something that is the same where in all of her social media, all of her content and to show what makes her special and distinctive. So that this is somebody you really want to know more about. And that's the whole idea with your personal brand. You don't have to tell everything in the world. It's not from when you were born to where you are now, but it's the highlights to get people excited and want to know you. Now, I want to uh, mention that I have a very special offer today for everybody who is attending. 
And this is to help you create the perfect elevator pitch so you can better brand yourself. And anyone who signs up for this gets a free PDF of my book. And the link for this is going to be put in the chat and it'll go also in a follow-up email. So I encourage you to sign up for this because it's a very helpful way to begin establishing a really excellent personal brand. And I also want to have some icons here to connect and in the uh, chat, my contact information will be there. In addition, everybody is going to get a gratis tip sheet on elevator pitches that Columbia will be distributing to everyone. So I now want to say thank you and I want to open it to Q&A and I look forward to all your questions. Thank you, Wendy. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Rodriguez, co-chair along with Francine of the Alumni Leadership Group. And it's my honor to moderate the Q&A for tonight's session. So we had a couple of questions come in, Wendy. Um, one, one question that um, we'd like to ask is, for this fast-paced world of elevator pitches, what if you only have a very high speed 10 second elevator? What, what do you recommend for you know, that really big bang of, of introduction of your brand? Well, first of all, I want to clarify that the elevator pitch is not necessarily something you have to say on a, an elevator. It's if you're in a networking function, you're on a Zoom call and people say, who are you? So it usually can be more than 10 seconds, but you might uh, have a few elevator pitches. Don't think you only have to have one. You can have a short version, one that's very snappy, that has a great headline and gets people engaged. And then you can have a little longer version. Also, you might have a few depending on the audience that you're with. So if you're with one audience that's more professional, you might have a little different tone than if you were with a more informal audience. But none of this is absolutely uh, cut in stone. You want to be a little flexible with it. Great, thank you. And um, I, I know we do have some participants uh, this evening that are just starting out in their career. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is just graduating from Columbia and looking to really uh, just develop and start their brand? One thing to do is one, to do some of the exercises that I indicated in the presentation, see how other people perceive you, do the skills inventory, Figure out what you're all about and what you want to emphasize, what distinguishes you from other Columbia alums. Everybody has a sweet spot, something that makes them special. So you want to hone in on that and emphasize that. I would then encourage you to build up your social media. Uh, LinkedIn is my home base. I love it. And it's a terrific career site. And I would encourage you to have a very engaging profile there. Don't make yourself look like everybody else. And then start posting content. LinkedIn makes it very simple to post something uh, on the site. It doesn't have to be an article. It can, you can, or you can link to an article and have a little summary about why you think this is a great article. So get on social media and start building your profiles there. And of course, it depends on your industry. Some industries, for example, 
if you're in consumer goods, Instagram may be better for you. So figure out where the people in your industry are flocking and get there and build your brand by being consistent, posting a significant amount of content and engaging with others. And as I underscore give, figure out ways you can give to other people there. You don't want to just ask. Yeah, we, we also had a question about um, the, the various platforms on social media, to, uh, to your point. And, um, you know, as, as you mentioned, I imagine it would be related to industry, but um, are, you know, other than LinkedIn, are there others that may be more targeted that should be, you know, should be utilized or, um, you know, made, I guess, consistent across platforms? Again, it depends on the individual and the industry. Uh, Clubhouse is a new platform that's come out that I only recently have been on and I was amazed at how effective it is. I was on over the weekend. I made a comment for less than a minute. I suddenly had three or four people want to connect with me. Somebody invited me on a show and I spoke for less than a minute. So I, and if you need, do need at this point an invitation to get on to Clubhouse. If you're not on it, you wanna check it out, email me, my email will be in the chat and I'll uh, send you an invite. You have to get an invite from a, somebody who's already a member. And as far as the other platforms go, it really depends on your industry. What I encourage you to do is to look at somebody who's very successful in your industry and see what platforms they're on. Are they frequent users of Twitter or Instagram or Facebook um, and, uh, or LinkedIn? And by looking at others, you can determine which is the best site or sites to be on. You don't want to be everywhere. No one has the time to do that. So just pick a few that are key for your particular industry. Great, thank you. Another one that seems to come up a lot with recent grads as well is um, what it, you know, what is the, the protocol or is it appropriate to follow up via email or direct message when after you just meet someone at say a networking event or, or you, know, uh, you know, just a short meeting? What, what do you recommend? Yeah, if you've just met somebody, either is fine. An email is always good. Uh, the other thing is to connect with them if you're, you met somebody and let's say they're on what I often do if I meet somebody, I connect with them on LinkedIn and I send them a note there. Uh, or you can connect if you see they're on a different social media channel. That shows that you're uh, aware of them and I think it helps establish a, the relationship. But you can certainly send an email, that's fine as well. And, and one question, Wendy, related to um, the makeover that you just shared with us tonight. How long does that process typically take for somebody that's trying to, um, you know, this in this situation, it, it really was a rebranding, right? So for someone trying to either rebrand themselves or even just strengthen their, their brand, what, you know, in terms of coaching or, you know, serious uh, self-reflection, uh, how long does that process take? It really depends on what the person wants to do. If they are clear, in this case, M.M. DeVoe was clear in terms of what her focus is. Some people aren't sure, so they're starting, behind, uh, not behind, but they're starting in a different place. Uh, so this was strictly a rebranding. In addition, if people aren't sure where, what their focus should be, uh, that takes a little longer because you want to do the skills assessment and really 
do some probing in terms of what would be the best fit for you. So it really depends and it could be from several hours to uh, a few months basically okay. uh, or even longer. We, we just had a question come in as well. Um, do you have a, a particular system for administering your contacts and how you follow up with them? You know, just from, a, from your personal um, uh, meetings and contacts. Yes, I probably, I have to confess, I probably could be a little better in this regard. <laughs> um, but what I do is when I meet somebody, I immediately connect with them on LinkedIn and uh, I often, depending on how interesting the person is, I'll often suggest that we have a brief call just to get to know each other a little more. Uh, the other thing to do with contacts, as I mentioned in the presentation, and I know I've been guilty of this myself, it's easy to let them lie foul. You forget about them. And you need to be systematic in terms of going through your contacts. And you can, and if you have a lot of them, you can just start in the beginning, start going through them and picking out ones that you really want to warm again, warm up again, that you haven't talked to. And do what I said in terms of reaching out so that you're connecting with people, you're re-engaging, has to be an ongoing process. There are databases that you can use to make it easier. Um, I have simply uh, used LinkedIn and you can, seg LinkedIn makes it easy to segment people into different areas. So that's what I've done. But if you're a somebody who's very systematic, you might want to look at a contact management system for yourself. Great, thank you. Um, we have a couple of questions that have come up on um, the uh, personal brand uh, versus professional. So, uh, how do you navigate your professional brand versus your personal brand, and and how do you you know do you integrate them? And with social media, for example, is it okay to both you know use personal and professional? Um, you know, branding on the same account, uh, or is it best to separate them? I would recommend that you separate them. I think it's confusing. And particularly if somebody's going to be looking to hire you, you want to have a professional approach. As far as a personal brand or professional brand, I see your personal brand as your professional brand. It's who you are, who you are about. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly you may have a sort of different, more fun-loving type of brand, say with friends. But for the most part, your personal brand is your professional brand. Mm -hmm. And you need to be cognizant of that. You don't want to dilute it. You don't want to be too free for all on it. So always remember that people will be checking you out and you wanna be, be sure that you're comfortable in what you say, because it can come back to bite you. People have said things online, as you know, it's always in the news, somebody made some comment and therefore they cannot have a particular job, that type of thing. You don't wanna be in that situation. so. I caution you to use good judgment. And Wendy, we did have a, a, a question about your experience in rebranding yourself. And when you rebranded yourself five times, were they each significantly different or were you just looking to branch out into another aspect of, of your experience? Yeah. And, and related questions on, on that that I'll, I'll hit you after this. 
Okay, sure. Um, I have to say that this branding that I'm doing now, because as Francine said in the introduction, for many years I had a PR and marketing business and I've now rebranded myself as a career coach and personal branding expert. And it's not far afield from what I did, but it's still different. And this rebranding has been more difficult for me than the others. And I think the reason is, if I'm really honest, I had my PR and marketing business for so many years, 20 plus years, that mm -hmm. I needed to step away from it. And it was very hard for me to do that in order to get to this other stage. And oftentimes when you're reinventing yourself and rebranding yourself, it's not just adding, but you need to be able to let go. And that letting go process took me a long time. I was very stubborn. I said, I'm not gonna move, but I did finally do that. And I'll share with you that what I did actually to get myself moving is I actually hired my own coach. A coach needs, needs a coach. So I got a what I call my kick in the ass coach to get me moving. And she has been successful in doing that. That's great because we, we, we have had a couple of questions about uh, really a, a change in career and and how do you begin that you know if it's a brand new um, you know how do you rebrand yourself uh, for something completely different yes when you're rebranding yourself and going into a new career it's always helpful if there's some things from your old career even though I said you need to let go there are usually some skills that you have from your old career that you can take into your new career. So for example, when I did this rebranding of myself, I have marketing, I have PR skills, and they're still applicable in what I'm doing. It's just um, sort of repositioning it, doing it in a different way. So I would encourage you as you're moving forward to see what you can take with you in your new career. I would also suggest sometimes it's helpful, as I said, I did it myself, to hire a coach who can help you assess your skills, figure out what is the best approach for you. How can you best explain what you wanna do and come up with this new career for yourself because it's hard to do that yourself. We tend to put blinders on and we don't see ourselves in a 360 degree picture and having that outside perspective can be helpful as well. And, and I think the, the last question uh, for tonight, Wendy, is how do you utilize your, your Columbia Alumni Network for your brand? Right. I uh, probably, and uh, you're encouraging me to use it a little more. For one, I'm participating in this event, for one. And I have stayed in touch with some of my fellow classmates, but probably not as many as I could. When I was in PR, uh, a lot of, because I went to the journalism school, there were a number of people in my class who were working at different publications. So it came in handy to use it in that regard. But this is a very good reminder and whoever asked that question, thank you for myself to probably reach out to some folks there. Um, and certainly for people who are newer graduates, I've been, uh, as you saw, I've been out a long time. Um, it's easier, I think, sometimes to reach out and to nurture that network. And it's an excellent uh, way to do that. Thank you, Wendy. And, and thank you to everyone who has joined us this evening.
we hope that you leave tonight with the knowledge and confidence to rebrand yourself for uh, any and all of your future aspirations. Uh, for upcoming She Open the Door programs, uh, please join us on May 6th for part one of our exclusive financial literacy workshop. We have a special guest speaker, Sharon Epperson, 93 SIPA, who's a CNBC senior personal finance correspondent and an adjunct professor at the Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs. Um, and this program is on identifying the options for managing your monthly budget. And part two of this, uh, the financial literacy workshop will be held on May 13th, a week later. And this one uh, would be, will be an interactive workshop where you can work on your personal finances in small groups with a financial advisor in real time. And attendance in part one isn't required to attend part two of, of that session. And um, for next week's Columbia at Home uh, uh, will be American Women in Medicine, how it started and how it's going. A conversation about American women in medicine looking at 172 years of history. Uh, Dr. S uh, Sara uh, Taufik will moderate a panel of two leading doctors and Janice P. Namura, author of the new book, The Doctors Blackwell, about the first female doctors in America. It's on May 4th at 7 p.m. And you can register for that program on, at alum, alumni at columbia.edu. And finally, as a thank you for being here with us tonight, Wendy uh, has generously offered the PDF copy of her book as well as a, and as well as a special discounted offer to her services should you like to schedule one-on-one -on -one with her to discuss your career goals and personal brands. And we're dropping that information into the chat box now. Uh, and we will also include it in an email communication shortly. Thank you so much, Wendy, and to everyone who joined us this evening. And uh, have a good evening. Thank you.